Hi, in today's video I'll be showing you the OpenFlops W1D, a project that I've been working on for quite some time. This is an open source floppy drive emulator built specifically to replace the broken floppy drives in the Compaq LTE Elite series of perfect DOS gaming laptops. Now in this video I'll be going through the construction of one of these units, uh, showing you exactly how it's built and then how it is installed into my personal laptop that I have right here, and then showing you how it works. So, uh, come on. Okay, over on the bench, and we've got our board out and the parts out that we need, and I just wanted to go through and show you exactly how one of these gets put together. So now I get these boards, uh, this is the PCB, it's flat on this side, and populated on this side. I get these uh, from JLC PCB, not sponsored, um, and I get them pre-assembled with these parts because, well, I'm lazy and it's relatively cheap. Um, so there's the ARM microcontroller, there's an STM32F105, um, and then there's some power and control clock and logic level and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much just the open flops design, um, but just slightly modified. Really, it's just the component count and the layout that has been modified to fit this use case very specifically for the W1D drive, only with the options that the W1D in the Compaq LTE Elite specifically uses. So, you know, this board layout matches the layout that fits into the Compaq, as I'll show you later. But anyway, Let's get to building. So I've got, like I said, the parts laid out up here. We've got a, uh, it's the 26 pin connector that lays up there. We've got a USB A port, goes down there. I've got two buttony thingies that go in there. We've got a speaker, so let's get one of these out. This is the little SMD buzzer, so that'll go there. We've got a screen, which is upside down. This is just a cheap four pin OLED, I2C, that'll go there. And we have one. Uh, green LED, so, oops, I've just thrown it off into oblivion. So the, the LED, it does have uh, capacity for two LEDs, and they are hooked up to, uh, I believe it's drive select and motor. Um, so when the drive is selected and running, they'll light up individually. Um, now, I'm sure with the original open flops and the GoTech in particular, this could be useful if there's multiple drives to select, um, or the motor was selected separately to the drive in practice with the W1D though, um, and especially in the Compaq LTE, uh, the Compaq has a, has a floppy drive light built onto the laptop. Uh, and like I said, in practice, uh, all three lights, so the two that are on this and the one that's on the laptop itself light up, so it kind of pointless makes it. Yeah, anyway, so I've opted just to have the one LED just in case the one inside your Compaq is broken. Um, you still get a LED, and I put this on, uh, I believe, the drive select. So. When the drive is in use, it lights up. When it stops being in use, it stops running. So it's pretty obvious though. Anyway, um, but yeah, let's get going. So there's a small order of operations in which I do this. The first and foremost thing that I do is I attach that connector up there just because it is the easiest and also the hardest to do. So what I will do is get this going. Get my iron here and I just tack in one corner pin for now and then I bring the iron over and solder that pin down and just align the rest of the pins. Now what I might actually do for this level of soldering I might actually switch over to my microscope so you can actually see what's going on. I'll be back in a second. Okay, that's a much better view of that uh, footprint. So yeah, there is the there's the one pin that we soldered down. Okay, and you can see now that we can just kind of pop that in place, and then I'll do one other pin over here just to get that uh, secured. And I'll just tap that in place. And that is nice and secure. <laughs> Apparently it's not. 
Come on. Attack down. There you go. Now it's nice and secure. Okay. So, then what I do is I apply a good amount of Amtec Flux. You can do it without Flux, but uh, just using Flux and a drag for this one makes it so much easier because of the relatively, oops, the relatively small pitch. Because of the relatively small pitch of these connectors. So, next what I do is I actually start in the middle pop the tip down and I just kind of flood and that will drop a bunch of salt down onto those pins and then using the flux and the heat of the iron I'll just drag that ball all the way across like so and then I go back and I'll pick up some more of that solder Looks like I'm down a little bit, so I'll just add a little bit more. And the flux keeps everything flowing. And then I'll just go back one more time, because I didn't get these last two pins. Yeah. Alright. See, everything is nice and solid. Now, it looks like those last pins didn't get enough flux, so let's just top them up. I mean, look how much that solder immediately wanted to flow down there. Ah, uh, that's better. So now what I can do, just with my tweezers, just to double check, let's just pick at each of these pins and just make sure that they're nice and solid. Good enough, and then you can see nice, beautiful joints. All right, let's uh, move on. So next, I'm going to um, move back to doing some big components. So let's go to the other side of the board. Where we have the USB port. Go in there. buttons here like so and we want to flip those over and solder so this is the USB port tack that in there this side. Now we want to try to use as little solder here as possible and I'll show you why in a moment. Try and get as much solder down in those joints. Now you'll notice I only soldered the pins and I haven't soldered any of these support points uh, even on the USB port. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder those from the top here. So I'm going to come in from the side and solder that from the top. And you can see that solder flows straight down into the hole and that provides a nice secure joint. Same with this one. Now the 
reason that we did that is because this side of the board, this needs to stay perfectly flush to the ma main board within the compact. So what we need to do now is actually get things like this pin here, so these are my little wire cutters, and this support here, and we actually need to fold those flat, or clip them off. I generally fold the USB ones, because they will fold really nicely into there. Like so. And then clip these as flat as you can get them. That seems really counterintuitive. Normally you don't want leaving a little bit of the pin. With these ones, you need to clip them really flush. And over here, do the same thing. You can see that that is really quite flush. There's not really much protruding at all. Okay, so now what we want to do is do that LED, and the same kind of thing applies. Yeah, we want to have the LED run flush, but there's the one problem is that it needs to kind of stick up here as well. So now I've got the bend down, because I've done a bunch of these now, um, but realistically you just want to bend the LED so it kind of goes down at the, you can see those two, point at them, these two little notches in the lead. So you generally want to bend it at that end there. Like so. So it's bent down at that thing. And then you want to clip it a few mil down from here just so it sits up and flush out of the board. Now, like I said, I've done a bunch of these. I know exactly where to bend it to, to where to cut it to. Um, in my head, I would just cut to there. <laughs> but uh, you might want to just fiddle around with the measurements until you get it right. And then, with that there, what you can do is you just flip that over, and that should actually sit pretty much flush. Like, that's already nice and flush. So I can solder that in. Like so. And that'll already be the right height up like that. You can always adjust the height just by bending the LED after you're done. But then I'll uh, do this one from the top as well. It makes it a little bit easier to get some good solder down into the holes because it does need it for support. Okay. So now would be the absolute perfect time to give this a ultrasonic if you wanted to really, really, really get rid of all of this flux residue. Uh, I'm not actually that fussed, so I'm going to leave it because this one's for me. But if I was selling this one, I most definitely would. I still like to get rid of the flux because it's just unsightly. And it leaves little sticky residues, especially at the back here, this uh, Amtec can be very, very sticky. And you know what, I might actually give this a quick ultrasonic. And... Alright, let me get back to you. Alrighty, fresh out of the bath, and we are looking great, nice and clean. Beautiful, there's our arm. Alright, let's get the last two components on. So that would be our speaker and our OLED. So, let's do with the speaker first. Now, this one's pretty simple. I just dob a little bit of solder on this pad here, like so, and then I offer up, while I'm keeping that warm, I just offer up the speaker, and you can see it wicks straight onto the side component there, hold it there for a second, and then we can just do the other side. Oh, you fuck. Sorry, my scope's not working, so we'll have to do this here again. So yes, we've got the screen. We'll go in here, but it does need to sit at an angle like so. So what I'll need to do is basically hold it in place while I'm doing that. Now I can just prop it with a the tip of my the thing of the handle <laughs> of my uh, cutters there, and just solder one of these legs in. Let me 
make sure we get some good heat in there to make sure that's in there and then just hold it with my finger at that angle like so and then let go and let that set and that is nice and solid now what we can do i'll just do the other pins really quickly And then we need to also fill in these two little support holes. So I will just hold my iron really solidly, clean tip to get the best heat transfer, really solidly on the edge of this ring and press down. And what that'll do is it'll heat the ring, heat through the VR, heat the other side and then heat the pad on the PCB from that. And then you can just start filling that hole bit of solder and that'll actually just go all the way through and solidify that connection. Give it a little second then let go and then you can see how nice and solid that connection is on the other side. And then we'll do the other one too. Hold it there for a second, wait for it to heat through and fill. Okay. And that is our assembled board. So I just want to clip those pins off. Now just be careful with these because they are pretty solid. They're not just regular, you know, LED legs or whatever. Um, they will go up flying off. So I'm going to cover <laughs> uh, with something. I've got a bag of LEDs here. So I'm just going to cover my face when I clip these off. Oh, yeah, they go flying. Oh, that one didn't even want to cut. There we go. Okay. All right. And wipe that down again. Okay. So we have it all soldered up. Now what we need to do is install the software on the microcontroller here because it is unprogrammed. So what we're going to be looking at is the Flash Floppy. Uh, which is a open source uh, equivalent to the original GoTech firmware that works perfectly on the open flops. It's actually what the open flops was designed to use. Um, and yeah, let's uh, switch over to the laptop here and check it out. So this is the GitHub repo. And you can see it has the flash floppy, supercharge your GoTech or, you know, floppy, em floppy drive emulator, not really a GoTech. Um, but uh, it does indeed on the wiki have all of the instructions for firmware programming that you need in order to get the software on here. So if we scroll down to the STM32 microcontrollers, there's two methods primarily. The first method is the USB programming. I don't like doing this mostly because um, I've had some issues getting the flash, the, well, the any of these, the open flops or the GoTex into DFU mode. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just find it difficult. So what I will be doing is the serial programming method. And for that, you get a little uh, USB TTL adapter like this, uh, bridge a couple of pins and hook it up and then you can run the STM flash software with the commands and everything like that. Now what I've got is one of these FTDI FT232UART based uh, adapters and I've got that hooked up to a little adapter that I made. <laughs> it's a little bit dodgy, it's a, a uh, clothesline peg but I've got some um, BOGO pins, so these are the springy pins like that, um, hooked up to the relevant wires, and those wires go over to the relevant pins, so they've got the, uh, the RX and the TX, and we've got power there, and this handles bridging the boot O that boots this into programming mode, and so forth and so on. So what I can do here is just attach this like so, it just clips in like that, holds on nice and tight, and then if we plug the other end into our laptop, Grab this code here, copy that, and we'll switch over to our terminal where we're already unzipped the flash floppy software. Paste that in, and we can see that it has picked up the STM programming there. So now what we can do, we'll do the other one that's there. So that is VW, and we want to program in the hex, and then there is the flash floppy. So this is the ST105 microcontroller version. And we want to send that to dev TTY USB 0. And that will start erasing and programming and verifying the software on our, uh, our connector here.
Okay, that is now programmed and ready to go. So we can detach our little adapter. And the other thing that I've got that I use for testing these, now this is out of a USB floppy drive. So it's just a USB adapter, the floppy actual drive that I had just didn't want to work for me. It was one of the really, really cheap ones off Amazon. But this board ended up coming in really useful because what I can do is I can plug that straight into here and it just acts like a, well, like a computer. So now we can plug in a USB stick that has some uh, disk images on it. I'll lay that down flat so you can see. And if I plug that into the USB port on the side of the laptop here, we have flash floppy. And you can see, oh, overkill, there's my Street Rod 2, MS DOS, you can boot one of the MS DOS disks. Some other stuff, there's some games, go into the games directory. Yep, booted the image. And then if we open up the floppy drive on the computer here, floppy disk, and there you go. You've got Alley Hat, Karateka, Yeesh. And that is working excellently. So now what I'll do is let's get this installed into an actual compact laptop. Okay, so let's move the board out of the way for a moment and bring in my compact LTE Elite 475 CXL, the pride of my DOS gaming laptop <laughs> collection. Now, uh, because this is mostly a uh, kind of like an install guide, I am going to show you the, the full teardown of this. So to start, let's flip it over and you will need, this is a Torx T8 bit. Pop that in your little screwdriver and take out the one, two, three, four, five screws on the bottom. It should be pretty long, goes like that. Okay. Now with those aside, flip it up on the top and take out this one up here. Now you can identify the case removal screws by the little arrow that they've got there. You can see that uh, they're all similar. Cover removal, little arrow, too easy. This is a short one. Okay, now we it back, open the lid up all the way as far back as it can go. And then you should just be able to then lift the side or the this keyboard cover. Once you get it to about there, you can then start push, pulling it forward because there's a little clips at the front here that you want to detach like so, and that comes off. Now we need to pop that aside carefully and get the keyboard out. So there's two screws either side here that hold that in. So the same screwdriver, bit T8, and detach those. Okay. All right, then you should be able to lift the keyboard up and then you need to slide it back because there's little clips here that hold onto the physical case. So if you do that, do it carefully though because there's still a ribbon attached. And then you want to flip the keyboard up and over like so and that's exposing the floppy drive and the, well, the keyboard uh, ribbon cable. So at this point you could um, remove the keyboard if you needed to. I generally leave it plugged in. It's not that bad. It can just kind of rest like that. You can maybe put a bit of blue tack or something there to hold it in place so it stays out of your way. Um, but yeah, now what we need to do is remove the floppy drive. So grab a pry tool of some kind, gently, very gently, because this ribbon cable is very sensitive, very fle um, uh, fragile, I should say. Uh, you want to lift that up and just pry up the little tab, the locking bar that holds it in place. So if we get that loose, once that's loose, that should just lift out like that. And then you're able to lift the floppy straight out. Okay. Now, in addition to recreating the floppy drive or the, the emulator, one nice thing that I did in this process, um, as requested by a member of the uh, Compaq, uh, the LTE and Armada community on Facebook, um, actually requested that I reproduce the floppy cable as well, because these, and I could dare say if you look at this, you can see that corner, it's almost actually about to tear, but it tears and just takes out those traces and these, you just can't get them anymore. 
So what I've done is made a replacement. So this I'm also selling on my store, but the uh, source for this, the KiCad files, um, and the, d d the, the details on how to get that fabricated. Uh, again, I use JLCPCB, not sponsored, um, to get those created. Uh, and that's a little flex ribbon cable. It's got the same little stiffeners on the bottom. It's the same layout. I even kind of copied the, uh, the design of the text. But yeah, that design is all open source and available on my GitHub, which I will link down below. But I'm going to, because I'm going to do a full upgrade here, I'm going to replace this with the new version. So what we can do now, pop the uh, accursed W1D drive out of the way. And let's get our system in. So we're going to make sure that the one that's marked floppy drive goes to the floppy emulator. Just slot that in like that. That will go straight in, just to push it as far as it'll go. Then we need to insert it into the laptop. Now, on the laptop itself, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because I need to show you, I am going to take the keyboard up. So let's just lift those bars very gently and take that away. Okay. Now, on the laptop itself, I will be showing you this way how to do it. Because there is, oops, that's a little bit of plastic. There is a tiny little lip right here. And this is what you need to actually mount the uh, board in. Before we do that though, there's a couple of screws that we need to lift up. And these are the two screws that mount the motherboard down to the case. So just remove those carefully. Like so. Like so. And then you can slide the floppy down in at an angle like that, making sure that the front of the board is underneath that that little lip there, you can see, and then we'll lever it back down and it should lay flat. And those two screw holes will line up with the two screws that you just removed. Now, I, uh, when I sell these on my store, I provide two new longer, and these are M 2.5 mil and they're eight mil long, or the, the thread eight mil. So what we can do now is just pop these in as replacements for the stock screws, and that will attach this board to the case and firmly secure it to the motherboard. And now you can kind of see why I had to uh, clip all those wires, all those connections, flush to the bottom of the board. Now don't over tighten these because you are just pressing down on the, the motherboard components, but uh, that should now be nice and secure. All right, let's flip that back around the other way. Put this little bit of plastic in, that's a little hinge cover. Goes back there. Yeah, and that is now solidly in there, ain't going anywhere. The motherboard is again secured and everything should just line up at the front. So now let's plug the floppy cable in. Just lift that back up. Okay, so now I've just dimmed the light so that we can see a bit better. Uh, in here you will see the display and we've got our USB stick in and our two buttons to operate. So if we hit the power, as soon as I find it, there it is, you can see there's our display and we can see we've got the uh, that games disc mounted. But let's get our DOS disc mounted. So there we go, boot into 6.22, that'll change into that directory and then we mount disc 1. and then. If we skip our memory test, you can see there, it starts booting DOS, and you can actually see it's reading the thing, and you can hear the speaker going nuts as it's trying to read the disk and showing the tracks and sectors and all that stuff. Okay, there's our DOS. Alright, we want to exit out of that because I don't want to install DOS. What I do want to do though is change disk, so let's get back to that. Uh, and we want to go back out to the two dots, which goes up a directory. And then I want to go over and find SR2, which is Street Rod 2. So now if we go back here, and we do a directory, a duh, we'll see that we now have the Street Rod 2 disk installed. So 
Let's go SR to start straight rod. There it is. Go VGA. Hmm. Gotta love it. There you go. Right, so, all in all, a pretty decent build. Uh, it goes together well, and it installs pretty easily as well. Uh, fits in really nicely, I'm very happy with how the PCBs came out. Um, and just how this project has turned out in particular, um, with the fit on the front here, that USB stick, slots in perfectly and uh, I had a lot of trouble getting that screen in a nice position so that you could actually see it from the outside and that angle worked out beautifully. Uh, now like I said earlier the design files for this are fully open sourced and I have the link down below for you to grab if you want to make your own. If you don't feel like making your own but you still want one uh, I do sell them on my web store which is also linked down below. I ship internationally. Uh, a whole bunch of them are gone out now so I'm really happy with that. Um, and also the design files for the little floppy cable replacement are also down there as well and you can get those made or again I sell them if you want one of those too. But um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed making this project and I'm um, hoping it helps the community of people that want to get these old laptops up and running, especially because those W1D drives just suck and don't repair up very nicely. But anyway, thanks for watching.